Hi, and welcome to the sixth tutorial video of Adobe Premiere Pro. In this video we are going to discuss the remaining tools and some basic functions of Adobe Premiere Pro, so let's get started. The first tool is Pen Tool. Pen Tool is used for frame masking in Adobe Premiere Pro. We will learn frame masking in our next classes. For now, just keep in mind that with the Pen Tool we can draw any type of shape on our screen. We will explain this tutorial completely in frame masking. In frame masking, it's also used for drawing something on the screen. With the rectangle tool, we can draw square or rectangle shapes on our screen. The ellipse tool is used for creating circular objects on our screen. For example, we have created these objects, we can also change their colors. And we can add strokes and shadows to our objects. Let's say I want to change the color of this circle. Remember these objects are basically graphics, we have created some basic graphics on our screen. To change color I will select the graphic layer from our timeline, and then next to the source window you will find a tab called effect controls. Click on it. Then in graphic, you will see four different shapes. Because currently, we have four shapes on our screen. The fourth shape is the circle shape, because we have created this, after creating both shapes. Before changing colors I want to explain some more basic features which are very important. On the left side of the shape names, you will find an arrow and an eye button. The eye button is used for viewing and hiding the objects. For example, I have created two circle shapes, and one rectangle shape on our screen. And this is another shape, that we created with a pen tool. I want to hide this one. So I will simply click on the eye button. And this shape will be hidden. Remember this shape is not deleted we have just hidden it. And we can view it by simply clicking again on the eye button. If you focus on our timeline, Premiere has created all shapes in one graphic layer. Now let's say I want to delete this shape that we have created with pen tool. If I delete the layer from my timeline, it will delete all three shapes. Because Premiere has created all shapes on one layer. If Premiere creates these shapes in the different layers, then we will have different layers on our timeline, and this will be so irritating to us. To delete one shape from this layer, Simply click on the shape in the effects control panel, and then hit the delete button from your keyboard. And your shape will be deleted. We can also rename our shapes. To change the name simply right click on the shape, and then click on rename. Type a new name, let's say, circle 1 for this, and hit enter. Now to change the colors, simply click on the arrow button on the left side of the shape name, and then from appearance, we can customize our colors. For color, we have three different options. One is filled, the second one is stroke, and the third one is shadow. Fill is basically the color by which our shape will be filled. Let's suppose I want to fill this circle with red color. I will simply click on fill color, and then I will choose my color from here. On the bottom right of the window, you will see an eye drop option. This is used for picking a color. Let's say I have a color, suppose this is the color by which I want to fill my shape. But I don't know what color is this. I will simply select eye drop, will move my mouse pointer to the color which we want to pick, and then click on it, and it will automatically pick that color. On the left side of the eye drop, you will see the color code option. Each color has a different code. And the code is the unique key of each color. For example, the color code for this color is E384 E3. If I copy this color code from here, and then I change my color. Now the color has been changed. If I paste the code again here, the Premiere will automatically match the code with its color. This is very important sometimes we have color code only, then we can match it from here. Now let's say I want to fill this circle with two different colors. Simply we can say that we need a gradient color in this circle. From the top left corner, I will change the color option from simple to gradient. Now we can fill our shape with more than one color. On the top of the window there will be bar, and in the bar, you will find four different color picker options. The two options below the line are used for color picking, while the pickers on the top are used to increase and decrease the color opacity. Let's say I want to fill this circle with yellow and red colors. 
At the beginning of the line, I will select the red color. And at the end, I will select the yellow color. In the center of the line, there is a location button that is used for moving colors inside the shape. For example, if I drag it to left it will drag the yellow color to the left. And if I drag it to the right it will drag the red color to the right. If we double click on the line, it will add another picker at the bottom of the line. And thus with the new picker, we can add new colors, and thus we will be able to use more than two colors. For example, I have added different markers, so our circle is filled with different colors. The upper markers or options are used for increasing and decreasing opacity. To use it simply click on it and then, change the opacity from here. If I decrease my color opacity, you will notice the opacity of our circle has been changed. And now we can see the objects we have behind our graphic. For now, I will fill it with simple red color. Remember once you did your changes, then click on the OK button. Stroke is used for adding a stroke to our shapes. To add a stroke, simply check the box of the stroke, and then choose a color. Now the stroke has been added successfully. And the shadow is used for creating the shadow of the object. We will explain this in text tool class. I am going to change the color of the remaining two shapes. Now in our second circle, I don't need fill color, I just need the stroke. For this, I will simply uncheck the fill color option, and now there will be no fill color in our shape. Practice it you will learn it well. If you focus on the program window the triangle shape is behind our circular shape. This is because, we have a rectangle shape below in our layer. If we want to keep something behind, then we will keep that item in the bottom layer. For example, if I drag rectangle shape to the top then it will be displayed over the circular shape on the timeline. And same is for the timeline. If I drag this clip to the third layer, you will notice, that our graphics are now hidden. Because we have graphics on our second layer, and we have clip on the third layer. It's very important to keep the media in the exact layers in which we need. Our next tool is the pen tool. Pen tool is used for moving the timeline. But we can also perform this action using this bar. It's also used for moving video without affecting it. For example, if I zoom my screen from here for getting a closer view, and some video is going out of the screen, then I can move it with pen tool. The zoom tool is used for zooming timeline. We can also perform this function by this bar. Texture type tool is used for writing something on the screen. And vertical type tool is used for writing something vertically. Type tool we will explain separately in graphic sections. Thank you so much for watching, now you have some idea of the effect control panel. This is a very important section of the premiere, our next few classes will be about effect controls, I hope you liked this tutorial video. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day.